Uh, we had several things that uh, we thought, and I'll start with the the first one. When you when we're doing when I do investigations, first thing you want to do usually is get to that scene and start taking pictures. So the way you take pictures, the way I developed taking pictures, if that incident occurred where that lady is in the red in the center table, if that's where the incident actually happened, I would start taking pictures from where I'm standing, for example. I, I pick north, south, east, and west, and I start moving in in that direction, taking pictures of everything that could be in my camera view at the widest angle. And then once I get to that table and take the very particular thing that occurred, then I go to the south side of that table as far away as I can and start taking pictures, moving in a sequential way, coming in from that direction, then the east and the west. What that does for you is when you get back to your office and a month later, you have all those pictures in your camera or whatever, and taking in a sequential fashion so that you know exactly what you're moving into, what was surrounding that. And there are a lot of times, in fact, in many of the incidents that I've, that I've done, I found out that things that I was taking pictures of as I moved in were actually part of the incident or contributed to it. So I think taking pictures sequentially like that is very important. Whereas most of the time pictures people took, for me, of incidents, they would show this chair and maybe a little bit around that chair and that's where the incident happened, but I had no idea what's surrounding it. Okay, the other thing we talked about was having a go bag so that you could have a go bag ready to go have a camera, maybe some, some notebooks in there and some questions that maybe you want to ask someone about any incident that occurred. The next thing we talked about was having the right team and you want to have like an OME, an operations, mechanical and engineering. Uh, and a team facilitator. These are for major incidents. For, for minor incidents, you may only have one or two people. So the, other, the last thing that we talked about was, uh, if any of you went to my uh, presentation yesterday where I did 230 investigations in a five month period, uh, my talk was not so much, look what I've done in five months, but how this worked to do generic type investigations. The investigations I had to do were all historical. It was 230 um, sulfur dioxide or SO2 investigations environmentally that all had fines attached to them that occurred in the past. The incidents had very poor investigations done or none at all. A lot of times it had no information. So what I, what I was able to do was instead of making each individual incident the, the worst thing happened, the worst thing that was happened was I had SO2 released, okay? So what you can do is you can, you can go through there and you have all your causal factors and your worst thing that happened was SO2 released. Then when I developed root causes and corrective actions, I could actually go back and look at all those incidents that I had very little information on and find that those corrective actions and root causes would actually fit on those incidents. You can use that for safety, for historical things that have happened in the past. Instead of looking at each individual incident that occurred and saying the worst thing that happened was, you know, somebody broke a finger or whatever, you can look at all that and say, we had lost time injuries, what all contributed to that or injuries. You can do that for economics. If you want to improve your economics, you can do that for optimization if you want to improve optimization. So that's the main thing that I learned in doing those 230 investigations was how you could go back historically and develop a whole th generic system that could actually give you some very valuable data. So thank you.